You're hidden between the skyscrapers. Nobody can see you. Nobody looking at you. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who any of us are. We're the little nobodies in between the giant skyscrapers that everybody sees and admires. With Pat's Two Cents, we're God's Church of Love. Every Saturday and Tuesday, we are going to read John chapter 5, and we're going to read about a person that spent their life not getting much done, not accomplishing much, having to deal with the obstacles of one's own limitations, the impotent man. And some of us feel impotent in different areas of their lives. I know I do. I still do. There are areas in my life I feel like I should have been developed way beyond where I am. I feel underdeveloped in certain areas of my life. And I feel like it's cheated me out of a lot of good things. And I'm still battling to get over some of them. Now, Let's move on and read, and this should encourage you, because no matter what our weaknesses are, no matter what our downfalls are, our propensities, our, whew, boy, our shortcomings, God can rise us above all that. But he's not in a hurry. He's very, very strategic. He's very deliberate, and he's very thorough. So no matter what your struggles are, God can enable you to surmount all of them. You may not get them all done at one time. Hmm. They may take a lifetime, but he will help you handle every one, one by one. It's like putting one foot in front of the other. You may not be able to run, but you can walk and you will get there eventually. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew him that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. Here come the excuses. Here comes all the stuff, our, our sob story. I have no man. <laughs> when the water is troubled to put me into the water, but while I am coming, another steppeth in before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. You know, <laughs> sometimes our litany of reasons, our litany of excuses, our litany of sob stories can stretch out much longer than God's readiness to heal us then God's readiness to put us back together again. Sometimes we don't realize how we allow ourselves to become our own stumbling blocks. God has high aspirations. He's he knows the plans he has for us. He knows the destiny. He knows the callings, the giftings, the power he's placed within you. 
He knows. He knows as soon as in and out. He knows our uprising and our downfalls. He knows us. And sometimes he even knows what our response will be when he asks us a question. <laughs> and he knows what his response is going to be to our response to him. Listen, God is not playing Russian roulette. God is not playing a game of chance on our lives. Everything that happens in your life, God is not surprised by it. God knows what he's doing with you. He knows what will make you. He even knows the individual heartbreaks that will create a giant of love in you. He knows the disappointments, the areas where you're discouraged about yourself. He knows how he's going to build on that. We see that as quicksand. God sees the quicksand as cement because he knows the added ingredients he's going to place in it to make it solid, a solid foundation. Because you're in Christ Jesus. That's all the difference right there. And some of you are going through a lot of questions about yourselves. You don't know what's going on. You don't have much. You don't, you, you see yourself as not having much to offer. And what did Jesus do with the boy with the fishes and the loaves? Mm-hmm. There were thousands of people. I think they counted 5,000 heads of men. And they didn't even count the women and children. So you can imagine how big that crowd was when, if some women had three or four or five or six kids. I believe that crowd was over 10,000 people at least. And you had one little boy in the whole crowd of people. What did Jesus say? He tells the disciples, have the people sit. First of all, he says, what do we have? You know, what kind of resources do we have amongst us right now? And the disciples look at him and say, then the little boy over there has got five loaves and a couple of fish, but what's that among so many? That's an obvious question. What's that going to do? Two fish and five loaves of bread or five rolls or five whatever. Five things of bread and two pieces of fish. And they were not large. And that's what some of you feel like. But see, God asked Moses a question when he called Moses into the ministry. And, and that's what some of you feel like. But see, God asked Moses a question when he called Moses into the ministry. And Moses had his litany of excuses of why he was not qualified for the task. And I'm going to tell you right now, for those of you who don't feel qualified, you're looking at one who doesn't feel qualified. I, so I know the feeling. I think all of us need this encouragement. We don't feel qualified. We don't look qualified. We don't waddle and quack qualified but if God says yes and who are we to argue with him what did God ask Moses he asked Moses hey boy I'm putting it in everyday terms what's that in your hand what did Moses have in his hand at the time he had a little old raggedy rustic stick a little old crooked stick that he used to, to to drive the sheep with. That was his staff. That's all that was, was a stick. Mm -hmm. It wasn't polished and pretty and hand carved and wasn't made out of gold. It was a little old raggedy stick. What did God say? Throw it down on the ground. See, when he threw it, then God told him to pick it up because it became a snake. Soon as he picked it up, it was a stick again. God was showing him his power. And if you stay in God's face, God will show you his power. He showed the impotent man his power. 
He showed the little boy, the little boy, the little boy, couldn't have been no more than 12 years old. He was the only one out of all those adults. He was the only one that had substance for all those people to feed off of. Do you know Lynn, Peter, Jeanette, Matt? Do you know you guys could be the only one that has that one substance that God needs to use that can feed so many? And nobody knows about you because you're hidden in between the skyscrapers. Remember we talked about that before, before we started recording. You're hidden between the skyscrapers. Nobody can see you. Nobody looking at you. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who any of us are. We're the little nobodies in between the giant skyscrapers that everybody sees and admires. But where's the glowing? Where's the light coming from? Down there in between, in between the alleyways where we are, where nobody can see us. But God. Some of you aren't sure where you are with the Lord. You have questions, only he can answer. But I want to tell you, God knows the plans he has for you. He knows who you are. He knows your name. You know, sometimes we don't realize how badly we need him. We don't always see our down sitting like God sees us. He sees us in the raw. He sees us in the buff. Nothing covering. We, we can hide and put on a masquerade for the people who know us. But we can't masquerade a thing in front of God. He sees and he knows. And if we determine to be honest with ourselves and with him, he will heal, he will straighten, he will smooth out all the rough edges, he will polish us up, he will prune us, he'll cut away, chip away, oh yes, until we become the vessels of honor he wants us to be. But you have to start where you are. You can't be looking down the road. You can't be looking all up high at the skyscrapers. You got to start where you are. Because God can deal with you where you are. Where was Moses when God called Moses to do the great work that he did? On the back of the desert. Where nobody knew who he was, where he was. He was in the back of the desert herding sheep herding cattle. Nobody knew him as a as the boy that was raised in Pharaoh's house. No. He was just another nomad out there in the desert. A nobody. He was one of those glowing lights hidden between all the giant skyscrapers. Glowing. He was the only one that got to see that burning bush. Hmm. Some of you will be the only ones to experience certain things from God because of the calling he has on your life. And the things you're privy to, nobody else will be privy to. Because God chose you. Just like that boy with the fish in the loaves. He didn't expect to do anything great. He was there minding his own business it was his, with his two little fish and the five pieces of bread. Who knew that a little 12-year-old nobody, I'm just putting a number on it, you know, give me the leeway to do that. Who knew that a little 12-year-old nobody or a little 7-year-old nobody would be the one God used to feed thousands and thousands and thousands of people? How many people are you going to feed? Hmm? How many people? 
What are you going to end up doing for God? Or are you going to stand and look at yourself in the mirror and present a litany of reasons why you cannot? Don't you dare do that. Oh, help me. If you can practice the presence of God, you will more readily hear from him. One of the ways that you can practice the presence of God is to sing praises to him. You always come to him asking for mercy, always ask forgiveness because you don't know what thought or emotion. You know, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Only God can. So you always come to him humbly. Ask God to forgive you for sins known and unknown. Ask God to fill you afresh. Keep your tank full with his Holy Spirit and his love. And then praise him. Think of all the good things he does in your life. All the things he's done. All the plans he has for you that you don't even know about yet. And sing worship songs to him. I don't care if you can't carry a note in a bucket. Sing to him. He hears it in pure, perfect pitch. Sing to him. Because he's listening to your heart, not your voice. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. The more you praise him, the more he inhabits. The more he inhabits, the closer you are to experiencing his manifest presence. The more you experience his presence, the stronger your faith goes. The stronger your faith goes, the higher your sights go. The higher your sights go, the quicker and faster you grow. Then you gain power all along the way. You gain power. And you become those witnesses for the Lord that he calls you to be. Because then you're not talking about something you read in a history book. You're not repeating something somebody said to you over the pulpit. You're talking from authority because you know that you know that you know. How do you know? You experience God. See, it's God that makes the difference. I don't care if you don't know how to rub two words together. This is for you or all of you on YouTube. I don't care what your abilities are or what your abilities are not. God can take you so far beyond your own abilities. It'll blow your mind and everybody who knows you will. It'll blow their mind too. And they'll say the same thing they said about Jesus. Definitely a prophet has been amongst us or a man of God or a woman of God or a servant of God, whatever they call you. They will acknowledge that you have a connection with God. Number one, because you live a holy life. You're not playing tiddlywinks. You're not playing with the devil's toys. Hmm to fulfill the lust of your flesh. You're not acting like a heathen when it's convenient for you to show you're behind. But you're living holy at all costs. People notice that, y'all. They're looking for the real deal. God's got some stuff for you. Whatever you do, do not. Be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. For those of you who are on YouTube, who still don't know the Lord, who have never said that sinner's prayer, Lord, forgive me, Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I accept the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I give you the driver's seat. I give you the wheel. Even if I don't agree with you with my little pea brain, I'm going to learn to trust you as I get to know 
who you really are. Help me to know you. Some of you need to start right there. And you think all this is religion. You think it's an, a vain exercise so folks can feel good about themselves. No. When you really connect with God, I'm going to tell you, baby, it's a big difference. Your nature changes. Those things that you are bent on doing, that you had the can't help it's about, that begins to change as you seek God because God is filling you with his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit changes your nature. So instead of you being bent on doing everything that's wrong, you start having a conscience, a God conscience. See, God gives you everything you need to walk this thing out. He doesn't throw you in the pool and, and let you have drown before you get it. He's right there in the pool with you, holding you, protecting you. But you got to get in it before you realize how far in it with you God is. You'll never know it until you get in it. That, it's like you'll never get wet from head to toe till you get in it. You got to get in Christ before you get to know who God is. You can read till the cows come home. You can memorize the Bible frontwards and backwards. But until you get in, you'll never know. There's a knowing that nobody, nothing, no life experience can take from you. When you hear people say, oh, I used to walk with Christ. That ain't about nothing. I call myself being a Christian. That ain't about nothing. It's a joke. It's a lie. It's because they never experienced God. Don't you let their lie deter you from your destiny. God's got something for you. You will never know all that you're able to do until you get in him. Do you know there are some giftings and abilities you never had? They will never come to the surface until you allow Jesus to touch your life. And fill your spirit with his. See, you can say no all you want. You can have all the arguments about, well, you know, they're, they're, everything ain't right in the Bible. And, and look at all these people. They're living hypocritical lives. and that That's their business. What about you? You going to let all that cheat you? From the love you've been longing for all your life? Come on now. All that love you've been wanting, all the recognition and the and the feeling of purpose and why was I born, all of that, all those answers are right in Christ Jesus. But you can't get the answers from him until you give him who you are. Then the answers begin to come. There's a song that says, all at once, he walked beside me. It's called I Can See, if you want to look at a beautiful song. It's about connecting with God like you never connected before. All at once, he, he stood beside me like he'd been there all along. Not a stranger, but a father who can sense when something's wrong. And he answered all my questions. And he understood my fears that somehow vanished now that he was here. And then he asked, can you see who walks with you? Can you hear who speaks your name? Can you feel something stirring in your heart? Mm, mm, mm. And then it was like, it sounded like an old familiar strain. Hmm. You know, we don't realize how God will reveal himself to us. We don't get that. 
but he will. There's a part of that song where it says, ah, oh, we, we asked him to stay. He was going to go, but we asked him to stay, spend an evening, spend a moment before he went away. And like a host, he stood and blessed me, broke the bread and poured the wine. And I knew there was something there I recognized. Yes, I can see who walks with me. I can hear who speaks my name. I can feel something stirring in my heart. How his words ring so strong and true like an old familiar strain. Mm, and I know I will never be the same. Yes, I can see. And from that moment in time, mm, I felt the emptiness subside and all the wonder of creation shining through. Mm. You know, most of us, if we're really honest, before we accept the Lord, one of the biggest obstacles in our lives, one of the biggest giants for us to, to jump over is that feeling of emptiness. That baby is gone when you fill your spirit up with God. I'm telling you. I can tell you firsthand. And that break the bread and pour the wine part of that song, that's God's what that's the 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 person who wrote the song, that's their way of describing holy communion when you and God become one in the spirit. And you have a consummated connection of love. And I'm telling you, nobody can tear down your faith at that point. You pray that you get that experience with God. You pursue him, you go on hot pursuit, you get in that word, you pray, you seek him for your destiny, you seek him for your calling, you seek him for your purpose for which you were born on this earth. You stay all under his armpits, as I call it, until you find out who you are in him and who he is in you. God bless you. Be encouraged. No matter where you are, out of him, getting to know him, all the way in, no matter where you are, God is faithful to get you where he wants you to be. If you're faithful to follow on to know, you're going to follow on to know? God bless you as you do. Amen.